Hello and thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion and You. My name is Sylvia Black and I'm your host. You can visit my YouTube address at sblack2001 at gmail.com. And thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion and You, which airs every Wednesday, 6.30 to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 12.30 to 1 p.m. If you want to holler at a sister, email me at sblack3001 at gmail.com. You can view my videos at sblack3001 on my YouTube address. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to talk on the continued basis of my book, You Can't Curse What God Is Blessed. And it's available on highwaytoheavenchurch.net. It's an unedited version right now, so if you want a copy as it is, you can contact me by email at sblack3001 at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to get you a copy. Now today we're going to talk about uh, some practical steps. Okay? Now Satan is the oppressor, and Jesus is the deliverer. Okay, people who say sickness is the will of God <clears throat> contradict themselves by taking medicine interfering with his will. They should rather pray for a double portion to really be in his will. I'm not saying to deny the medicine. Uh, I commend the doctors for doing what they do, but I think that we should also trust and rely on God. <clears throat> now some of you may be asking unanswered, yourself unanswered questions, uh, such as questions about your daily struggles that seem to have no end. Okay, you may be complaining about how your life is going, not happy with the way things have turned out. Uh, you never, you may never seem to have enough. It seems like you're uh, living from paycheck to paycheck. Uh, can't decide which bill to pay. Don't make enough money on the job. Uh, the folks on the job are always picking on you or talking about you and so on. <clears throat> Why do bad things happen to you? Why don't uh, things seem to be getting any better? You can't seem to get up out of that bed of affliction. Have you ever known someone who always seems to have something bad happening to them? If it's not in the family problems, then it's money problems. If it's not money problems, then it's something else. Why? Because it's a curse, right? Genesis 3 says that ever since Adam's sin, uh, the earth and mankind have been under the curse. Okay, the curse is eloquently described in Murphy's Law what can go wrong will go wrong. Can we ever be truly free from the curse? Yes. We can be free from the curse. In fact, we are free from the curse right now. In Galatians 3.13 says, And Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, uh, having become a curse for us, but curses everyone that hangs on the tree so that blessing can come. I want to show you how to reverse the curse so that your failures, your lack, our failures, our lack, uh, and stop our complaining, and then we will start to begin to get blessed. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can't curse what God has blessed. <laughs> okay, now Deuteronomy chapter 28, the curse brings the following things. Poverty. Verse 29, 38, it says, poverty simply means not having enough. Deuteronomy 28, 29, New Living Translation says, You will grope around in broad daylight just like a blind person groping in the darkness, and you will not succeed in anything you do. You will be oppressed and robbed continually, and no one will come to save you. Deuteronomy 28, 38 says, You will plant much but harvest little, for locusts will eat up your crops. Okay, <clears throat> emotional problems, verses 28 to 26, we're talking about poverty. Deuteronomy 28, 65 says, There among those nations you will find no place of security and rest, and the Lord will cause your heart to tremble, your eyesight to fail, and your soul to despair. This is someone who has actually cursed. Family problems, including marriage problems and problems with our children, verses uh, chapter 30, Verse 34 and 41 says, Deuteronomy 28, 30 to 34, New Living Translation, talks about you will be engaged to a woman, but another man will ravish her. Uh, you will build a house, but someone else will live in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will never enjoy its fruits. Uh, your ox will be butchered before your eyes, but you won't get a single bite of the meat. Your donkey will be taken away, never to be returned. Your sheep will be given to your enemies, and no one will be there to help you. You will watch as your sons and daughters are taken away. 
excuse me, as slaves. Your heart will break as long um, as you long for them, but nothing you do will help. A foreign nation you have never heard about will eat the crops you work so hard to grow. You will suffer under constant oppression and harsh treatment. You will go mad because of all of the tragedy around you. Deuteronomy 28.41 says, You will have sons and daughters, but you will not keep them, for they will be led away into captivity. Sickness and disease and cancer, we're talking about uh, the curse. Okay? Uh, we're talking about sickness and disease. Okay? Uh, terrorism, failure and defeat, fear. But there's good news. The good news is that if any of these things are operating in your life, they don't have to. They don't have a right to operate anymore. When Jesus went to the cross, he nailed those curses to it. He brought you back from bondage of the curse. He paid in full for every punishment, problem, and curse that should have fallen on you and me. <clears throat> Imagine being jailed for a crime or innocent you unintentional or accident you unintentionally committed. Regardless of your innocent, the jury regardless of your innocence, the jury finds you guilty. You'll be frustrated, bitter, and confused. That is what the curse is like. You don't intend for bad things to happen, but they do. Here is an answer to our problems. Here's how we can reverse this and stop these things from happening in our lives. First, we must be convinced that we are redeemed. We must declare who we are in Christ. We must stop expecting bad things to happen to us. Sometimes we embrace ourselves. We brace ourselves for bad news and bad things so they don't jolt us too much. Stop conditioning yourself to expect negative things to happen. Your spirit has enough energy and chemistry in it to bring those things upon you. Uh, that's what Job meant when he said, What I have feared have come against me. Job, 30, 30, Job 3.25 so claim your freedom from poverty, emotional problems, family problems, sickness, and failure and fear. I found out that if you speak failure, then you will fail. If you speak victory, then you will be victorious. If you speak a negative report, you will have a negative report. If you speak a positive report, you will have a positive report. In the book that I'm writing called, There's Nothing More Powerful Than a Change Mind, that's a video, but that's what the book will look, probably look like. There's nothing more powerful than a change mind, and I started writing that because the last, the last chapter that I put in this book, you, um, I will do a new thing and you say at the law, which is all available on highwaydairandchurch.net, and it talks about there's nothing more powerful than a change mind. It also talks about how if you think you can, you will. If you think you can't, you won't. These are stuff I go into detail about what goes on upstairs in our head and how that affects our body, how that affects our life, how that affects everything in our lives and what we're dealing with. If you speak a negative report, you will experience a negative report. If you speak positive report, you will experience a positive report. If you think you can't, you won't. If you think you can, you will. And I include scriptures in that book about uh, positive thinking and what have you. I give a whole lot, I find a lot of scripture and it's like pages and pages of it. And it talks about thinking positive. We must stop, we must enlarge our God and not our problem. Instead of speaking about our situation, we must speak to our situation. Like when we prayed a couple of weeks ago about the devil, and I prayed the devil you are no longer in command, I was speaking directly to him. That is exactly what Jesus Christ did when he walked the face of the earth. He spoke to the different things. He spoke to the sickness. He spoke to the, um, the trees. He spoke to the things and the individuals and the people. He spoke to the victory. He spoke directly to the devil. Okay, when he cursed something or when he blessed something, he spoke right to it. And that's how we're going to become victorious. One way we're going to become victorious is if we speak to our situation and not about our situation. <clears throat> the Bible says that if we have a grain as small, if we have faith as small as a grain of mustard seed, then we can tell that that mountain be that removed. And, have, and our faith will move that mountain. Okay, any mountain, mountain of fear, mountain of poverty, mountain of, 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 uh, of, of, of sickness, okay, mountain of disease, mountain of lack. We command you right now to be removed in the name of Jesus. And our faith has sealed that and made it so. We must speak to our situation. When you're thinking negative in your mind, when those thoughts come into your head, when the devil tries to plant those thoughts in your head, replace it with scripture. 
You cannot replace a negative thought with a positive thought. You must replace a negative thought with scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that lives within me than he that lives within the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm more than a conqueror. God didn't bring me this while leave me. And what have you. When situations and circumstances go, I'm going to say it again. We don't speak about our problems. Stop complaining about your problem because what you're doing is you're enlarging your problem and diminishing the power of God. We must speak to our problems. Tell that problem to go away. We bind that problem, that sickness, that disease, poverty, like we bind you right now in the name of Jesus. You have no place here in the name of Jesus. You have no situation here. You are not welcome here and we ask you to command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Leave and be gone forever in the name of Jesus and be under the power of God. You have no power here, Satan. You have no power here, demons. We command you to flee and come up out of these persons. Come up out of us. Come up out of our situation. We speak to our mountain. We command our mountain to be removed right now in the name of Jesus. And any negative thought that you have in your mind, we must replace it with scripture. You cannot replace a negative thought with a positive thought. You must replace it with scripture. <clears throat> That's how Jesus Christ rebuked the devil and sent him on his way. He spoke scripture. No man lives by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, which is in the Bible. Okay? No longer will we live in defeat. Okay, again, I'm talking about my book. You can't curse what God has blessed, baby. You can't do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can't curse what God has blessed. Okay, no longer will we live in defeat. Okay, why are so many people and every Christian barely getting by financially? Sickness plaguing their body, fear and failure pressing their minds, family problems destroying relationships. The answer is because of a curse that causes a person to be hemmed up in obstacles and to be powerless over their circumstances. Be the, uh, but there is good news according to Galatians 3. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, so we no longer have to live in defeat. <clears throat> we no longer has to have to live in defeat anymore because God has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So we can say, hey, I no longer will live in defeat in the name of Jesus. Okay, defeat it was a mountain. Defeat, I command you to go. It's also a spirit, just like fear. Fear is a spirit, and if fear is a spirit, we can tell it to go. Just like worry. Worry is a spirit. If, we can, if it's a spirit, we can tell it to flee. In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. Spirit of fear, spirit of worry, spirit of lack. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I have faith as small as a grain of mustard seed and bigger. And I have faith, and I command you, mountain, to be removed. Get out of my way, mountain. I hereby command it to be so, in the name of Jesus, right now, amen. The Bible says in Matthew 27, 45, 46 at noon, darkness fell across the whole land until 3 o'clock. At about 3 o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Elah, Elah, Lama Sabachthani, uh, Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They thought my Jesus was dead. His body had been dead, but the spirit yet still lives. That means that we still live. The people thought that they had gotten rid of Jesus forever. After all, they saw him die on the cross, or so they thought. They saw him being nailed to the cross and hung there to die, and they watched it as it happened. But how many of y'all know that three days later, he rose from the dead, baby? And just like he rose from the dead, so shall you and I rise up from our situations. Okay, turn to your neighbor and say, you can't curse what God has blessed in the name of Jesus. Three days later, he rose from the dead with all power in his hands. Huh? Oh, death, where's thy sting? Huh? Oh, grave, where's thy victory? Yeah. The Bible says in Matthew 27, 15 to 23, huh? now it was the governor's custom huh, to release one prisoner to the crowd. Each year during the Passover celebration, uh, anyone they wanted. Uh, and this year there was a notorious criminal in prison uh, by the name of Barnabas. Uh, as the crowds gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked them, which one of you want to be released to me? Uh, Barabbas said, Barabbas of Jesus, uh, who is called the Messiah. Uh, 
He knew very well that the Jewish leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message. Leave that innocent man alone. Because I had terrible nightmare about him last night. Meanwhile, the leading priest and the other leaders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas to be released huh, and for Jesus to be put to death. Huh. So when the governor asked him again, huh, which of these two do you want me to release to you? Huh, the crowd shout back and they reply, Barabbas, huh, release Barabbas. Huh. But if I release Barabbas, Pilate asked them, huh, what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Huh. And they shouted, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, huh, what crime has he committed? Huh? But the crowd only roared louder, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. What God has blessed, no man can curse. Huh? Nobody likes to suffer. Huh? Suffering is painful. Huh? According to the book of J.N. James, The Myth of the Generational Curse in Zulon Press 2007, God's blessing always prevails. Huh? It is the light that dispels the darkness huh? and the good that overcomes evil. Huh? Yet the idea of power of cursing continues to seduce the minds everywhere, the minds of men everywhere. For we are God's masterpiece. Huh? He created us anew in Christ huh? so we can do the good things He planned for us a long time ago. Huh? Ephesians 2.10 New Living Translation says, for we are what He has made us, huh? created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand huh? to be our way of life. Ephesians 2.10 NS, NRSV It's perplexing that so many people find it so easy to resort to their evil rather than good. The enemy turns to the powers of darkness and evils for their help. Huh? A believer turns to God, huh? the only one and only. And somehow it seems so difficult to be convinced that exceedingly greater is the security and safety that God provides us freely. Sinners enjoy embracing illusions rather than God's reality. But it is even more perplexing when some sinners think that they have power to curse God's people. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can curse what God has blessed. And I remember the story of Balak and Balaam. That's found in Numbers 22, when they wanted him to curse him, and he ended up blessing him. Oh yeah, yeah. How can you curse those whom God has blessed if you speak to it? In Romans 10, 9 and 10, in Numbers 27, 8 and 10 and 11, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together. Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield the water. Thus you shall bring water for them out of the rock, and give drink to the congregation and their animals. <clears throat> and Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Here now, you rebels, must we bring water from out of the rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation and the animals drank. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The problem with the church today is people are saying things out of their mouth without convicting in their heart. They are speaking to situations, but there's no faith in their heart. God told the children of Israel to send 12 spies into the promised land. Then spies had a bad report. Two of them had a good report. God knew all along that there were giants in the promised land, and God knew they would have to have faith in order to enter the promised land. Just a notation about that when Moses uh, struck the rock. 
That first time God told Moses, strike the rock and the water will come out of it. And Moses followed God's instructions. He struck the rock and water came out of it. The next time God told Moses to speak to the rock, but instead of Moses listening to God, he struck the rock and nothing happened. And he struck the rock again and nothing happened. And he kept on hitting that rock and hitting that rock and hitting that rock rock and then finally water came out of it. Huh? It took a whole lot longer for water to come out of that rock the second time huh? because Moses struck it. Huh? But God told him to speak to it. Huh? And all we got to do is speak to our situation huh? and speak to our circumstance. Huh? And we will have faith huh? and the victory over it. Huh? Speak to your situation. Speak to your circumstance. Speak to your money. Huh? Speak to your poverty. Huh? Speak to your fears. Speak to your worries. Huh? Speak to your problems huh? and don't speak about them. Stop complaining, otherwise you might end up like the Israelites huh? who died in the wilderness. Huh? A 40 year journey huh? was only supposed to take 30 days huh? or so. And they ended up wandering in the wilderness aimless and without direction huh? and ended up dying right in their spot. Huh? And they complained so much huh? and they said they would rather die in the wilderness huh? than to be a slave. Huh? And they got what they said. Huh? They spoke their feet huh? and it came to pass. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Huh? And if you speak defeat, it'll come to pass. If you speak victory, it'll come to pass. The same words that Jesus Christ used when he was on the face of the earth is the same words that we can use right now to heal our bodies and deliver us from our circumstance. It might not seem like nothing is happening or going on, but you can better believe that once we speak the words of God, God has already embarked on his angels and sent his angels and disseminated them in different places. So they can now influence other people to turn their decision around in your favor and in my favor. In the name of Jesus. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things uh, not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. <laughs> Always remember the true Bible faith is never about future. It's about right now. God is waiting for living faith to come out of your mouth. Just hearing the word uh, is not enough uh, to you to take uh, take you to the promises of God. <clears throat> you have to take what you heard and speak faith out of your mouth. God's promises are instant, uh, but you have to mix faith with them to see them manifest in your life. Faith has nothing to do with your emotions. Uh, faith is based on the Bible uh, and speaking faith that is in your heart. Faith isn't faith <clears throat> until you speak it out of your mouth uh, and believe it in your heart. The woman with the issue of blood uh, mixed her words uh, with what she believed in her heart. Uh, it's not a matter of just believing in your heart. Uh, you must also speak it out of your mouth. Mark 11, 23. You have to speak to your mountain. Uh, God always said it before he did it. Uh, he always spoke to it before it came to pass. Uh, your words are like seeds that must be planted. My words are like seeds.